see why. Danarai, guys, has the exact same decks, I think, pretty much, as Trusky. We can have a look at his decks a little bit more in between games. Um, we've been making an effort, or I say we, the, the guys working behind the scenes, have been making an effort to try and keep the breaks in between series a lot shorter, just for a better viewing experience. Um, so I hope you guys can appreciate that we haven't had as much time to look over the decks as possible, but we can, you know, shoehorn that in elsewhere. And ultimately, what we're here yeah. for really is to watch the games of Gwent take place. And Danarai has the elf deck, very similar to what we've been seeing already, and it's going to be going second against Nilfgaard. We saw this matchup a little bit earlier on as well, I think, didn't we? Where yes. um, there was a lot of pressure around one from Squirtle, one on even, and then it did, Squirtle just about managed to win that short round three. Yeah, this might definitely be a matchup that Dan and Rai is looking to queue with the same strategy that Trusky ended up going for. So let's see here if Magpie is going to keep it up. And if Dan and Rai can secure that win on even, that's going to be amazing because that will be played into this uh, count lead that Magpie has now put on the board, guaranteeing some really, really value bleeds uh, potentially for Dan and Rai. And that indeed is the tempo. There is the scenario. Let's see, is Magpie going to answer with the angle leave? Like um, I believe Mion did last game. I'm having a deja vu here. <laughs> Very similar to what we just saw yeah i was gonna say that i feel like we've seen this before we're already learning the the, the lines of the matchups uh, in this meta as we say it's just a week into not even a week into this season so having a top 16 qualifier so early on is quite unusual and again this is the exact same patch the exact same uh, balance of cards that is going to be present at the open later on in well i think it's at the start of next month but it's at the end of the season so the guys are qualifying for that open that's going to be this month so they've already got like this big advantage maybe over some of the players that are qualified last month with this big experience of playing through the qualifiers and dan right at the moment we saw in the last game um square player really looking to win on even has might not even have to use any leader charges to get ahead with with the lack of angle and commitment from magpie here We'll have to see magpie is kind of uh, playing a little bit slowly here there is an interesting card in magpie's hand and uh that is the spy of course with the death blow plays really nicely into the waylay waylays but here comes donirai and plays the first vanadine triggers the scenario eloren is out it's a big temple play it's a lot of commitment potentially from that bleed in round two but if donirai has a great hand he could even consider going all in with some of these waylays now haven't been set up for the sim last we shall see uh but the bleed is certainly going to have to happen because of the row cap that elves uh, might be in danger of I'm going for a long round there. I want to compare the lines and decision making from Magpie in round one compared to what we saw. I, I think it was um, Mayamon do. Yeah, so yeah, Mayamon went for the Angolem of his own, um, played the scenario. He still lost the round on even after passing on seven, but he forced the heat wave from uh, the Squirtel, his Squirtel opponent. What that meant is the third chapter was not triggered. The second chapter, I always do it. I need to call it the final chapter. <laughs> the final chapter was not triggered from the scenario, which denied that waylay carrier we talked about. Also, um, Mayamon was able to force two leader charges from his opponent, whereas Danarai, he's got uh, the waylay, the extra waylay in the graveyard from the Fane Death, and he still has leader charges. So you would imagine that Danarai is in a very strong position here. It does look really good. And look at this death blow value here. Uh, two pings taking care of whatever Magpie has created here. The little Elven Swordmaster. She's not allowed to stick on the board and do any damage. Uh, Danarai sees the opportunity, plays it. Also, these archers are a little bit uh, scary in a longer round three because they could potentially end up rogue ricking. So getting them out now is just nice, nice, powerful plays and nice bronzes to try and go for this value bleed because again, uh, Dan Ray knows that there was the Calvit, so the quality of Magpie's hand has to be pretty good here. Yeah, and of course with Dan Ray winning on even in round one, he is going to be dictating how long round two goes on here. Does have the ability to play one of these waylays because there's already one in the graveyard and, and Alyssa can put back two. Um, however, if he was then to not find this Alyssa in round three, he would also be wasting um, a little bit of carryover, so he could decide to hold on to them. He can apply pressure to try and uh, try and win the round. I would imagine 
it's more likely he's just going to play a bunch of bronzes and go deep. Again, we, we saw the hand in the last series of the square tail player being very gold heavy. For Danarai, that's not the case. Lots of bronzes with things like the squirrel, the archer as well, as this bowman as well. So, yeah, the bowman, another card which got that point buff as well, Seelie. Uh, now four points. Yeah, it's also nice that Danarai kept these whalers in hand because it means you can mulligan them later and hope for that clean sim last without any any of the whalers in hand once you do decide to play them. So it does look exactly like you say. Darner is going to go ahead and play these bronzes and look at this squirrel value. There it is, a squirrel into the coup. Magpie not being allowed to play that coup again. Also being able to keep up pretty nicely here with the Joachim into the blight makers, knowing that those were on top, knowing that that's the kind of tempo that Magpie needs, um, but not too much commitment in terms of being bold cards. Yeah, it's a 16 point game at the moment, but again, Danarai just in control, dictating the length. He's just gonna keep playing some of these Bronze cards again. The waylay maybe not so much because he's got two in the graveyard now. This is a carryover card essentially. So you would imagine he probably just plays one more bronze and then he is done here. It's going to trade for a gold here too. It's going to trade for a gold. Maybe we see Invo on a one point Joachim Seeley. That's what I would go for I think at this point. <laughs> It is a very slow tempo play, but for Magpie, that would be the best in terms of carryover. Maybe it's a little bit risky, but um, you, you could do that. Very slow tempo, but you're ahead with a lot of your Magpie. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is Invo is like going to be a really weak card in round three. You're going to be invoing something like an Isengrim for maybe like seven or eight points. You could, I suppose, also invo the Venosio and then... Um, I mean, Joachim's already gone, right? And uh, There's no fur cart, so I do believe Magpie was maybe supposed to just take this Invo because this Invo is not going to be a card he wants in his round three hand, particularly, whereas Brothens would be. I think Danaro is in a really strong position here. I think it's got a little bit of pear shape for Magpie. We can only say this. I would not know this, but having watched Mayamon play this exact same matchup and s still lose, it seems like Mayamon was in a much better position at this point in the game. Yeah, I have to say that Brothens is a big commitment. It's also something that can copy uh, for the Angoline Fain death. Of course, there is an informant now in hand, but the Brothens copy is definitely important. Um, so we'll see how this plays out. And now Danarai has set up for that huge Simlas and no waylays in hand currently. So everything is going smoothly. Those have been mulliganed away. And Neiromancy also looking to find something here. And uh, the Elisa can't put back, of course, the waylays. Yeah, one waylay played from hand created by Vanadane. One waylay uh, created from the Fane Death. So that is gonna add up to the maximum amount of waylays for Danarai uh, in this deck. There is Five ways- of them. <laughs> yeah, you can get more uh, if you're to play stuff like sorceresses and then create more waylays and then put two created waylays back but the feign death is is obviously the best way really of creating that and here comes muzzle just as a value 12 point card this is the beautiful thing about muzzle you can use it as a control tool but unlike heat wave where heat wave wouldn't well, not be playing for many points at all here muzzle still playing for for decent tempo here 12 points is is no joke no joke at all and magpie does of course have a lot of points on his side of the board too get those assimilate engines down get your angling down get some assimilate off of the feign death as well there is a lot of points but honestly i cannot wait to see the simulas come down for so many points leader vernosiel can almost wipe the board uh, is there even going to be enough <laughs> units to damage at that point we'll see yeah the other thing to consider as well is magpie's leader ability onto simulus could play these diplomacies which again i haven't i always forget to pay attention to these subtle things but i imagine there's a couple of diplomacies in the deck for magpie he'll be trying to make sure he sets up here comes the angolem into feign death of course you are going to be able to trigger this as nilfgaard because you're able to play your opponent's elves if you find a verno from a leader as well mm -hmm. you could uh Re reactivate that commando, Ooh. which is definitely not bad either. <laughs> That's a lovely little bit of synergy, yeah. That'll be good to see. Yeah. And for Danarite, because go on. Verno is just not going to come down before uh, the Simulas comes down to get all that dead eye value as well. It's just going to add on to that bit, but yeah, go for it. <laughs> and there it is. The big Simulas comes through. 
Is it gonna? It's gonna clean up the commando, and that is a lot yeah. of bloody Never points, <laughs> mate. That's a lot of dead eyes. They've all gone in the back row, which I think is just ridiculously yeah. insane odds, because I don't think they're supposed to go in. Maybe they go opposite row. Oh. No, they're think... random for yeah, sure. Yeah, they're random. <laughs> and... They are definitely random. All right, here comes the leader as well, having to go for the Vernossial, I would imagine. Best point value to go for, and boom, Magpie does have a lot of elves on his side of the board now, and the point gap is there. But no Donnerize Verno, plus three whole leader charges that he was able to hold on to can come down and really try to wipe this board. Oh and that's what we're going to see. Oh, boy. Hold on to your hat, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you've got your seatbelt on, because oh. Vernossial is going in the front row, and there's a lot of pings. Oof. <laughs> Cleaned up the Assimilate card too, which is a lot of points with this bribery coming through. Um, Terra Nova is going to trigger, you know, trigger Assimilate onto Assimilus. Both Diplos are going to be triggering Assimilate. Also, the Waylay is going to be triggering. So that Venosio killing the Assimilate engine, absolutely huge there. Another Waylay if you even want to. My goodness. <laughs> oh, that's not a, a bad pull. For these Diplos, that was definitely quite cool. Let's see, is there anything you can heal? Not really. Should be a boost, right? Yeah, oh a little bit Imagine of a sad that's what one you're there. Going for. Oh, you yeah. can, <laughs> can kill the Swordmaster, so it's not as bad as it first looked. And yeah, the game is a lot closer than we maybe imagined. Magpie showing us the power of his Angle and Fain Death plus Terra Nova. And here comes the bribery finding the Isengrim, which is going to play for a lot of points. Is it going to be yeah. enough? No, it's not. No, not quite. <laughs> nice little finisher that Danarai can hold on to there. <laughs> yeah, Danarai has the Vanguard for round four. I mean, you've got to, you've got to get at least one round four joke per cast, I think. Yeah. So it's an unwritten rule. Into game number two of the series with Danarai 1-0 up over Magpie. Here we go. And what we see is Syndicate versus Skellige. How do you feel, Spizzy? Are you excited to see some Sigvold action? <laughs> oh, mate, it is time. It is time for the Sigvold, so... I'm sorry, but these draws from Magpie. I just see the hand and he's like... <laughs> All the high-end stuff except for Fukusia, really. <laughs> that is pure talent. As you mentioned, no discard yes. package. So Talented. royal decree, the only real way of tutoring it. It's not even respecting the power of the Fisher King. Admittedly, Fisher King is worse <laughs> without the discard package. But yeah, the key thing that Magpie's done compared to these Sigfold decks that I've played myself is the introduction of Melusine instead of Becker's Dark Mirror. Becker's or Twisted Mirror. It's had both names. I'm not sure which it's called at the moment, but Becker's Dark Mirror um, can be used yeah. on Sigfold um, for an insane amount of points, but it's very all in. Whereas going for a card like Melusine instead does just give you a extra Sigdrifer target, an extra big threat. Also worth noting this Eternal Fire Disciple uh, has also got a buff recently where it's now just one cost to spawn a Zealot. So you're, you're spending one coin for two points. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly why it's been included in these lists. Now, Trusky had uh, the same list as well. We didn't get to see it in action because yeah. Syndicate was banned. So I'm really excited to see this one in action. We do have a little bit of Swarm Synergy here. We have uh, the, the Gellert there as well coming in, potentially poisoning, giving a lot of, of value there before the Adrenaline. Magpie, on the other hand, is setting up this Melusine, which is a nice backup if your combo does go disrupted. If your Sigvald, um, for example, gets bled out in round two. If you're able to set up this Melusine in round one, carry it over all the way to round three, you can still have an amazing short round with a really big Melusine in round three with the Siggy's right, for example. So it's a, it's a very cool deck when it works. Absolutely, and you hit the nail on the head. When it works, this Melusine is a card that makes such a difference if you find it in round one. And that's why Magpie's got this Royal Decree in the deck. Even when he was playing Discard Package, he still had Royal Decree to try and find that Melusine Defender combo. But he didn't even need to use his Royal Decree. So maybe Danarai might just be rolling his eyes a little bit at the draw luck, but it is mm. a card game after all. Magpie also showing us the yeah. synergy with this ship, the armor on it, just tanking the hits from Melusine. Um, it's a really nice opening start from Magpie, developing a whole bunch of carryover, while also uh, developing a few engines. 
And one thing we did talk about with Speci when we went over the syndicate deck list is not only the swarm value, but also the tribute value. There are a lot of tributes that you can go for uh, in this list, making KOB a little bit more flexible. But yeah, here is Gellert, and this is why he's in the game. You can play him early, you can get that value, you can boost up your engines if you know you're not playing against any poison. Uh, you can just go ahead and drop, drop him there and definitely contest round one with a lot of points on the board right now but yeah tributes flexible kob is flexible with the cleric for example cleric also supports um the the disciple there on the melee just really fun to see these fire sworn bronzes make it into uh, a syndicate deck yeah you can really see the power of the gallop here so the adrenaline is still active on gallop so what you would imagine dano is going to do is click his fire sworn uh, I guess you click the Gellert first, buffing the Disciple. As soon as he plays a card, he he, he loses the Adrenaline ability on his Gellert. And you can really see the synergy that the Gellert has with all these Swarm cards um, that have been buffed recently. Here comes another one. And on the side of Magpie, the Sigfold is now down, Sealy. The Sigfold is just going to be tanking some hits from the Melatine, but cards like Mardrome are now going to be playing for an insane amount of points on the Sigfold because it instead of taking damage, if you've not seen this card before, it is just going to be bleeding which uh, it's also a cultist as well. So it's going to be switching Melusine's yeah. order back on every turn, which does work out at plus two points on Melusine every turn. And we can already see that Rain doing a lot of value. Sigvald is looking pretty threatening here for Dadurai. If he continues playing into this round, it's definitely going to be um, big stuff to deal with. So let's see how deep Dadurai can really go. But... The Melusine carryover is also getting bigger and bigger the more turns Magpie gets here. Yeah, that's exactly it. And a Devotion Syndicate deck doesn't necessarily have those answers to Melusine that other decks might have, like Squirrels, like Heat Waves and Purifiers and all those sorts of things. So Melusine is a particularly big threat, and you can see the difference it is in getting this Melusine because not only was Magpie able to apply a lot of pressure with this, uh, this Melusine, but also develop a ton of carryover. And winning round one as a Gedineth deck, without using Gedineth, without using anything really apart from carryover, okay, you've committed a Defender, a Sigfold, a Melusine, but you've got Sig Driffa. You've got Bride of the Sea to even maybe replay that Sig Driffa. And of course, you've got Fukusha as well. 18 points as a potential Resurrect. And I mean, it could continue to grow Sealy if round two is played out. Yeah, let's see what Magpie does decide to do here. Uh, Danorite has to defend a potential bleed. Uh, also, nice getting that forced in the um, the graveyard as well, giving a little bit of an extra boost on e Ewald there, playing for nice points. So finding the brothers quite um, w when you need to find them. And here is Magpie with a Dwim, but no truffle there is a truffle in magpie's deck and he's definitely uh wanting to set that up if he had it but it's not here so magpie really has to decide now is he gonna go go for it you need um cultists of course for the um or druids for the getty so we don't really see those yet so the pass is definitely justified yeah, and it's a little bit of an awkward draw pass for Danarai without a profit-making card. He is going to go into round three with no coin carryover. So you're always pretty happy to see Syndicate not having much coin carryover through the opponent. It's usually quite easy to get at least a little bit, but none available here for Danarai at all. Now, uh, the, all eyes on the cards drawn by either player, particularly, I think, Magpie. Still looking for that truffle. Of course, Rodder Creep can shoot at any unit, but it cannot shoot at an artifact. That's right. So let's see how the draws go. And the Dwim has to go here, be a mulligan for a magpie. Just a maxi, probably not really what you want to be seeing here. Yeah, Fakusha can be found off this Royal Decree, but the Mushy Truffle, still in deck. Sensible decision from Magpie, really, to mulligan the Dwim Vendra. You can actually use the Dwim Vendra on to the Gettineth as well for an extra Mardrome, but you would need an extra Druid in order to do that, which 
I'm not sure he has access to. He has access to Bride of the Sea. That's actually the only one, right? If he goes for Kusha as well. Yeah, it's definitely awkward. Lacking a little bit of uh, Druid action. That's why a lot of players have been playing Ermion in this deck. I believe Payabol was last season. Yes. Um, playing a little bit of Ermion. I think a few of the players in this tournament are as well. Just to get you that extra Druid. Um, the Alchemy card's super valuable with Sigfold. Dan alright opening up with a Tax Collector. Just getting that engine going. And let's not forget that there's a big fat Melusine in the graveyard for... <laughs> 18 points definitely not bad want to get that out early maxi here showing the deck but not really doing much unfortunately it is round three but if magpie were to go to round four he would know what he's gonna draw so there's that something that's great about this package of bronze cards with the fire swans is you're playing devotion already for, you got, you've got your horse and junior a lot of the time, the Jacques Devotion payoff feels fantastic, but only really in Congregate. You get the Veil, which is one difference. But every time you play a Fire Swan card, he's going to give you an extra coin, which is very significant when you're playing cards like this. I want I think he's called an Inquisitor, the guy to the far left of Danarai's hand. Also, yes. um, the Inquisitor is going to be spawning back a... Um, you, you, you can use the token here, and it's then going to be spawning mm -hmm. it back a couple turns later, so... This Inquisitor kind of playing for, for nine points here. If, if you just say that Jacques is a 12, this was a nine point card. So really it was, it's points for Jacques and this was an eight, but you can certainly see the synergies uh, with all those other Fire Swan cards we saw in round one with the Gellert. It's a really nice approach to, uh, to Syndicate with these buffs. Yeah, it's definitely not bad at all. <clears throat> for a four provision card there uh, that you're playing out now this Marils as well for Don Wright is looking quite nice there is no defender mm. um the defender was played in round one to protect this Melusine the Melusine has to come out pretty early and the longer Don and Rye waits to actually take care of this Melusine the more value potentially Don and Rye will also get on the Marils because the Melusine right now is damaging Magpie's own units so if it does a lot of um damage here to something like the Maxi then the Marils is going to taste even better later on when you do end up getting rid of a, a tall unit. But here is Fukuzia, and let's see, the defender has to come down. Oh, nope. wow. Okay, never mind. Mate, never mind. out of all the options, greedy, Celia, I was greedy. not expecting that. It's very greedy. No defender, no Sigfold, instead going for the bronze and utilizing the rain from Fukusha. Now, what that also enables, Seely, is Bride of the Sea can suddenly be used or onto Siggy. a Siggy. And again, Into Defender. you can see the logic of having this Fukusha, this Melusine, rather. I always get those confused. Like, just this yes. extra little bit of rain giving you that extra license with Bride. Like, Bride is so fantastic with a Mardrome onto Sigvold. But Magpie just using the rain in unorthodox ways that I've not seen. It's really great to see. It does give Danarai the gap to go ahead and still do something. But then again, if you have the Bride enabled, then the Fukusia dies and then you can rest the Fukusia again. So yeah, Magpie is playing very greedily, but he knows exactly what to play around, which is definitely not bad. I wonder what the bride is going to come down on, potentially. Maybe waiting a little bit to see if it has to come down on the Melusine again. Yeah, he's got to he's got to have played the Getty as well, right? To, well, because it's, it's, it's only Druid. He only has access to one Druid. Yeah. So he's going to completely whiff, uh, whiff otherwise on this Getty. Uh, it's already going to be missing the Mardrome, which is far from ideal. But Bride of the Sea is a Druid. She is also a cultist, I do believe. So she can be placed yeah. next to the... Uh, the Melusine to be getting that rain engine ticked back on because uh, you damage Melusine by two and spawn two turns of rain, the, the two turns of rain uh, working out four points. So it, it does make the card a much better engine. Of course, this nut as well is a big potential point slam of damage, but no restore in Magpie's deck. So maybe not the best nut in this case, but definitely a nice bit of removal. It will be a nice bit of removal, and let's see what the bride comes down on. There is still the Mardrum value as well that you might want on your Sigvold or something on the Knut. So you could, I guess, rest the Sigvold as well. But let's see what we go for. It's either Defender or Sigvold, and it looks like it is the Sigvold. Magpie is being greedy. So greedy. But to be fair, the Sigvold will get pretty tall as well. Yeah, I mean, 
Rails is already going to be getting big value either way. So it does make some sense for Magpie to just play another big tool unit. And now suddenly the nut is a lot better. What Magpie is going to want to do is get his sig fold as tall as possible with cards like Swallow Potions and this Mahakamail as well as the Mardrome, and then start using the Nut onto the Sigfold. A lot of time with Nut, you'll see it get its Berserk ability and be used multiple times. It's quite difficult to do that in um, in Mushrooms because it can heal itself. Of course, you do have the option of like playing it next to Melatine to try and use it multiple times. Um, but the, the tool of the Sigfold is, the more bleeding Sigfold gets, the more damage the Nut does, and the more bleeding the Sigfold does, the more points it is. So you really want to get the Sigfold nice and tall. And seeing as Morassi is already playing for 23 plus points on this uh, melee scene, I like the decision not to go for Defender. Horson would clean it up as well, right? You could damage Horson it by six. Horson would clean it up. And then, and then you have all these Swallows and the Mardrum as well that then would just play for like six points. So definitely mm -hmm. putting those points to use when they're going on the Sigvold is the strategy. This is a greedy deck. Magpie is playing very greedy cards. And yes, they do suffer from tall removal, but at the same time, you have two big threats there, which is not bad at all. And the Sigvold as well is negating some of that uh, Melusine damage as well on two Magpie's own units. 24 Melusine. I don't know when the last time I seen such a tall Melusine was. It is huge right now. Yeah, and that is the difference between finding those cards in round one. That is why Magpie is playing that Raw Decree, and a lot of people do play Raw Decree in any starter self rune deck, even the Ursine Ritual decks. Um, of course, with the Scar Package no longer... Being as good, Magpie deciding to cut that, but just managed to draw the card he needed anyway. Of course, did miss the, tr the truffle, which is really significant, right? Because he might have going to do Invendra. Wasn't able to also um, get this final chapter. Didn't get the Bonded Preachers. So it definitely hasn't all gone perfectly for Magpie. But he is far ahead. But let's not forget the morality is a bunch of points too. Tin Boy as well. It is huge. It's looking kind of nice. Big, yeah. <laughs> it's looking really nice. Also, Dadurai has the full bank right now. Full bank and uh, King of Beggars as well, looming somewhere in there in the deck. But a lot of raid value from Magpie. And here comes some of that boost onto Sigvold. And now Sigvold and Velocine are almost looking equal <laughs> in size. Magpie, very, very far ahead indeed. And you can see the logic of him not playing the Becker's Twisted Mirror. Uh, and instead going for something like Heatwave, because while you can use Beckers onto Sigfold for a whole bunch of points, um, you know, you kind of don't want to go so all in, maybe in a tournament setting, and it's better to just be distributing your points, having these two big tool threats mean that the the, the Morassia isn't going to play for, you know, it's playing for a bunch of points, but you still have that one <laughs> big threat. It can't kill both. Exactly. Can't kill both. Danaray has to choose, but he has time to decide as well. He's kind of holding on to this. Let's see also where Junior is going to come come down and what it's going to hit Ewald here. Spending a little bit and the rope. <laughs> there you go. Wiping away the Crow Clan creature there. Nice little engine. And of course, these Inquisitors are doing their drop as well. There we go. Yeah, nut place next to Melatine does mean that the um, Berserk ability could be activated, I do believe, in time for the last turn. Yep. There's Morassi. Goes down on the Sigfold, which makes sense because that bleeding was going to just be transitioning into straight up points. Yes. That was definitely intense. And this Tin Boy is definitely a lot. Meanwhile, Magpie has two six-point cards right now in his hand. But the raid is doing a lot of damage. So let's see here. Donna Rice, the last play has to come down. It's going to be Tin Boy. And there's a Tribute. King of Beggars, right? Yep, that one for spending purposes as well. And the full leader. <laughs> wow. This game, also one of these that are very, very close. And just imagine this final card was a Preacher, for example. You would have enough points just to trigger that scenario um wow it really was the difference a single preacher instead of a swallow potion was the difference there magpie is going to be a little bit heartbroken what a close game syndicate <laughs> takes it dan Arai winning that yes. game and two nil up in the series close now you can almost taste it let's see if dan Arai gets 
this Nilfgaard through as Magpie taking a rematch with the Skelligan Mushroom list. Now we get to see it again. And indeed, Specy, there is the Mask of Uroboros thinning one more time for Magpie, increasing his odds of finding uh, things like Melusine round one and the important cards later. Lots for Magpie definitely to mulligan here. And <gasps> again, as we saw in the last game, Melusine is important there. It is beautiful. Celia, I was about to say, this hand is not looking so hot. He, he had no defender, he had no Melusine, and he took two Mulligans, and suddenly they are there. There is something to note as well. Against Invo, the Melusine can be pretty detrimental um, if it gets invo yes. But with the defender as well, uh, it's going to be a little bit more safe. Uh, I don't have the deck list handy just because my OBS situation. Is there, is there a Purify in... Um, the Nilfgaard deck on the other side, or is that no. is that Magpie's deck that has the Purify that card? That was Magpie's tech. Right. Yep. Magpie playing the Imperial Diviner that not existing in Donnerai's deck list, no Purify, so that defender is sticking. Magpie being very happy. You found it here, so you can set up the Melusine, but going for it right away, giving Donnerai a turn to... Um, potentially invo it, but this way Magpie is kind of maxi maximizing um, the, the carryover on Melusine if he's saying, oh, Dynarite doesn't have the invo or Dynarite doesn't want to take the invo if he has it. But it seems pretty good to take it. It does, but also the invo now is significantly worse than it would be in a couple of turns. And this is just, he's, he's, he's saying, Let, if you want to invo my, uh, my Melusine, you can, but then my Sigfold is maybe going to pop off because I don't believe there's a heat wave. Lots of people preferring cards like Muzzle recently. Um, and yeah, Danarai decides it's not quite worth it. And now we could see the defender come in. I love the play out of Magpie there just to get that Melusine down that turn uh, sooner. It's going to be two extra carryover for him. Um, potentially two carryover into round two, but also maybe even into round three if he plays it both times. Probably won't. Exactly, and with this one... In row, just like you said, Spessy, Donnera really has to choose which one of these threats are you going to answer. If Magpie doesn't draw all of his threats, that is going to be a pretty obvious answer. But if Magpie has a lot of threats on the board, this deck is kind of threat overload in a way, then Donnera definitely has to make that big call. Is it going to be the Melusine? Is it going to be something like the Signal later on that you can't really deal with? Otherwise, there's no damage going through. You have to take the Invo uh, if you want to get rid of it. Danarai taking the emissary with that little synergy on the turncoat, reducing the cooldown and buffing up. I'm loving the turncoat in to Nilfgaard. It really is great to see his card. It feels like it belongs, you know? It's just before they had the Mage Assassin maybe was a little bit too good, uh, so it didn't quite make the cut. But now with the deck losing a few provisions, it's great to see this card um, being played in this deck. And yeah, Danarai going second, obviously you can just... Play it as non-committally as possible while also maintaining that reach so he can just take it in one card if Magpie is ever to pass. And if Magpie, on the other hand, does take this round, he can decide to potentially bleed. The Calvite is there, so getting those golden cards off of Donirai would be quite nice, especially if you can save a really chunky Melusine for round three, a short round three. But we'll see. It depends a little bit on what you can res. That defender is quite important as well to hide your Melusine behind it, because otherwise that invo is definitely something Donirai wants to look out for if he gets the chance. And here is the pass from Magpie. Dana right now, just like Spicy said, has the reach nicely with Ku, takes it onto the defender and has round control. Yeah, has round control with a bunch of golds in hand and Calvate having gone down on the board in round one. So many more golds to come here. So really the all, all I should be on Magpie, there's the Gettyneth. Uh, Twin Vendors also a bit of a risky card to play against Nilfgaard because they have a truffle of their own and of course they can copy them um, and that's going to trigger a whole bunch of assimilate so Twin Vendors not the best in this particular matchup um, so I think Magpie's going to be quite happy that he doesn't have any of those does have three Preachers available two in hand one as an option off truffle I think there's also a half through as an option there off truffle um, all eyes really on Danarai deciding what he wants to do and then how much Magpie respects the bleed potential 
Yeah, we're going to find out here. The truffle is, of course, tempting to set up. It's also tempting to bleed magpie because, again, you only have that one in -vo. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening from magpie. There's potentially really tall druids with all the alchemies being played. There's a potentially really tall Sigvold. There's potentially another Melusine that you have to deal with. So it makes sense here that Donnery does go for the bleed because, again, you can only answer so many threats. So maybe the Getty is something that Donnery is looking to squeeze out. Or any other comp. This play is utterly filthy. Because usually if you're bleeding with Nilfgaard, how, the, how on earth do you bleed? What would you play? You'd play a Truffle into an Illusionist? That's not great. No, just play Joachim into Furkar into Ku into Joachim Blightmerk and it's all guaranteed because of the power of Calvay. Wow. Wow. There's the Getty. You got it. <laughs> yeah, Magpie's just got to slam the Getty here. There's there's no doubt about it. Like, it's going to take quite a long time for the Getty to start developing the points. Um, Bride of the Sea, if there's any alchemies in the graveyard, can be quite a lot of points. Defender and half through, not so great. Not yet any alchemies, I believe. So we're going for the Defender there. half uh, the not the half -roos, the Preacher's getting that bonded. Also, we're seeing the passive of the Battle Transfer ability. Whenever an Alchemy card is played, uh, one of your cards is also going to get healed. In this case, it was a Joachim. Muzzle comes through onto the Preacher. That is also now going to be an option off of Terra Nova because of the spying that was applied to it. And uh, that is a big and it's a gap as well, Seely. Point swing, I believe that's just what you were about to say. <laughs> yeah. That's a big point swing indeed. And here it comes another preacher and another alchemy to get magpie ahead. And right now, it's looking like magpie is a card ahead. Dunnerite hasn't yet set up the truffle either. You'd think that that's something that Dunnerite might want to do as well. But yeah, that temple was looking really good but saying that just getting the getty wasn't good enough Danaro was saying he had to bleed a little bit more but spending quite expensive cards in doing so like the muscle and not being able to keep the card not great for Danaro right now bonded preacher in the front row even though the one in the back row is locked the bonded ability will still come through not the best terra nova the defender didn't seem great at first, but maybe it's going to be quite nice because there is a heat wave, of course, in Magpie's hand. For example, Magpie could have been tempted to heat wave the Mushy Truffle, denying six points, but also the alchemy bonded play and all the assimilate and also potentially the carryover. Instead of being forced to heat wave the seven point defender, not ideal. Danarai's leader ability um, also could find the Bride of the Sea. But apart from that, the options aren't looking too hot. Yeah. Um, I don't know that Bride of the Sea will be enabled until yeah. Dunray actually triggers the order on the Truffle. So, yeah, Magpie doing a pretty good job at playing around a Decree, of course, can still tutor something useful for Dunray. But Dunray is kind of spending a lot of resources here. Like, what does Dunray have for round three? Magpie still has the Melusine, and if Magpie gets, gets this card up, can play it last say, there won't be an Invo on it. Mm -hmm. Um... So this is definitely a bit of a pickle for Donnery, but he keeps playing, definitely setting up this truffle. It is carryover for later. Now, not having to worry, the heat wave is gone, so you can kind of safely come down there as well. And look at Magpie. <laughs> is he going to take the leader here to get the point gap, to keep the card advantage? Has to decide. Gives Donnery a pass. Yeah, offers the pass in order to keep his leader ability. Basically, now the ball is on Danarai's court. Magpie saying, listen, mate, if, if you if you want me to just uh, win the round, I, I'll do so. I'm not going to try and win on even. Danarai not interested. Here comes the Brathens, mm -hmm. an assimilate engine, putting a second bonded preacher on the board. We're going to see the truffle click into the leader, setting up the bride, into which is also bride. now enabled. I wonder if yes. Magpie was supposed to play his bride to play around the leader ability this, this turn before him. That was big. Yeah, that definitely would have stopped Danarai from spinning. Spitting out these points. <laughs> Look at the gap. We were so close just now. Danarai doing a really good job at turning this around. A situation that looked a little bit grim for a second there, but nope. The bride value is just insane. Magpie here is forced to go ahead and get the defender to, of course, then protect the Melusine because the points from the Melusine is, is potentially needed. There is the decree into the Fucusia, um, 
we'll see how mm. Magpie can most efficiently get those points and potentially even say a card, but not giving uh, Darn Orion a nice invo here, a tall unit to invo of those creatures is really nice. And Darn Orion's going to be doing maths now. I love this play from Magpie. He is reducing the points of this invo by a significant margin. Instead of being able to invo a 16, you're going to now be invoing a 7. Darn is going to be doing the maths of can he beat all of Magpie's plays. Bride of the Sea, and he knows the hand as well, right? He knows the hand. <laughs> he will be able to do the exact maths if he's a wizard. I wouldn't be able to do it, Celia. I'd be struggling. I'd be and counting and miscounting. Of the rope. I know. Yes. Let's see. It is a lot of points. Bride into an alchemy into your leader as well. This means Magpie could get that card advantage, then get the Vakusia into the Melusinium on three. That's a huge play, but Inmo does come down. It that did come down, so maybe Danarai is confident. Danarai must be confident if he takes it. Whew. He must be confident that he's going to be forcing a whole lot of source from the hand of Magpie here. The only way, of course, of replaying this Melusine in the graveyard is with the Fukusha. I, I believe, has Siggy's right already been played? Yeah, Siggy's right was played on Just played, the Defender. wasn't it? Yeah, so now Magpie is kind of hoping that Bride and Leader <laughs> would be enough, but there is a huge point gap here to catch up on. It's instead the Sigvald that Decree is going for, and now the Alchemies are being spent along with the Leader. Uh, but Invo is out, so if Magpie manages to find this Fukusia here, that will be that will be a lot of points, whereas Danarai has now spent most of his resources. I don't think that there's very much left in Donorai's deck. Can Magpie draw the Fukusha? So far, no luck, but also the hand on the other side is not looking too hot either, it must be said. Yeah, I was say Donorai doesn't really have a lot of resources left, so maybe you don't even need the Fukusha, we don't even need the Melusine. And <laughs> like, finding a Doom here is nice, but yeah, the Dakar is not what you want to see. Still wow. no Fukusha though. The Dwim Who's gonna see the <laughs> Last Mulligan finds it. Wow! Calculated or something. I don't know what's going on. Magpie really believes in this deck. It really believes in these draws and it's paying off. Wow. So it looks like Magpie is gonna take this one. Um <laughs> yes. with that draw. He is. The, the big question comes down to, was it correct for Danarai to take the invo? I mean, I suppose the logic for Danarai was that if he doesn't take the invo, there's just not a big commitment needed um, from from Magpie. Maybe like Leader would have been able to be saved or something like that. And he decided his only real path to victory, he realized he was in a sticky spot, was just that he wins the top decks. Um, and, and it hasn't quite worked out for him, but just, you've got to play to your outs, play to your win conditions. And uh, yeah. Really fun game. Magpie takes it though. Yeah, GG. Magpie does take it. Yes. It did look like uh, a lot of threats for Nilfgaard to deal with. Nilfgaard these days doesn't have a lot of control in their decks in general. So it was going to be really tough, I think, for Danarai to get this right. But yeah. Oof. We've seen lots what of close game. games so far today, Seeley. 2 1. It is the Elves. Let's see how they perform. Yep. Will we be seeing a similar strategy again from Magpie pushing? Uh, of course, both Trisky and Donna Ryan, when they play these decks, did have access to Feign Death in round one, which has helped with the push a lot. Magpie right now is not finding it, so we'll see. We'll mm. see if Magpie can draw even a hand to, to really push with here. Yeah, it's a really good point. No Feign Death. We have seen, as you mentioned, so far every time today we've seen this matchup, which is twice. Uh, Elves winning it both times, but they won on even by slamming a feign death. That's not the case here. So maybe Magpie's going to have to take a slightly different approach. We see the Maxi here. Aileron right near the bottom. Feign death and Simless quite close to the bottom. That could be a bit of an issue, but a Neuromancy near the top. Yeah, I think this Maxi potentially wants to shuffle. Both Simlas and Vanadane are cards that you want to kind of set up as well. You want to have time to set it up, so... And especially if you're getting pushed, you might need it as well. We'll see. I mean, Donorai can kind of play out his Kalvit here, set up the draws for later. Maybe, I mean, Donorai knows the strategy. And if he doesn't see Feign Death on turn one, he might have a hunch that um, Magpie's missing 
uh, some important things here. So can afford to play a little bit slow here, not have to worry just yet. Yeah, and also the Maxi in particular is is giving Dana Roy quite a lot of information about what you just mentioned. Because of Maxi having the human tag, she's not a card you would want to play before playing Feign Death because she's going to switch off the commando that, that opens with Feign Death. So Dana Roy is going to have a lot of information here probably already. Um, either about the way Magpie is going to play it or maybe just about the state of his hand. Yeah, the Maxi is definitely a very good point here. Uh... That Spezzy brings up, and let's see how here how um Danny Wright does answer. Could set up a torture. It's exactly what we see. A little bit of engine value. Start working on those pings. There's also a torture to later set up a better target for our Todd, which is something Danny Wright's probably looking for. Yeah, and elves can't really afford to pass. The long round is going to be a real overswarming problem for Magpie. So. Definitely needs to try and win the round. The turn he just used on the turn cope. Very importantly, because this archer can be played in the back rope to deal two, one damage to two cards. Um, and that is going to spawn a dead eye for every death blow, which is a lot of points. Not sure how many points, but it's a lot of points. So It will be a lot of points indeed. Getting both death blows. Sacrificing basically the first death blow to set up the two death blows for the second one, but then running into the joust. Definitely not what Magpie wanted to see. However, Magpie is going to be playing for reach. Just like Spessy mentioned, winning the round here is very, very important. Now, the, the copy here from Donnery doesn't seem too bad either. Playing a spy into a guaranteed death blow is quite nice as well. Yeah, Magpie does have the Verno as an option, the Neophyte isn't too great but i mean if you wanted to end up going for a front row verno let's not forget that aileron with the leader charges that yeah. is so powerful in this dead eye ambush deck and why it's such a good deck to play on the red coin in a tournament setting if you go second you know that you've got a lot of reach at all times with that combo I like that Donna right here is waiting one more turn to really guarantee double death blow on the elf, pinging down uh, the melee row two before going ahead and and copying it potentially. And uh, yeah, just like Spezzy mentioned, here is the Elrin putting some points on the board, but the double death blow is going to come in clutch here for Donna right without having to play two committal yet. That's... Two golds now, or well, three golds. And there we go. I've not seen that Perfectly play before, Seely. The informant onto the archer, and then you kill the informant for the death blow instantly. Yeah. Nilfgaard just proving Very... that it does your strategies better than you do. Yes. Sacrificing that torture, potentially an Artaud target later, but waiting perfectly to, to have that death blow is really cool. Neophytes can transform um, some elves into... Uh, Dead eyes. I feel like this was a point missed by Magpie. Magpie decided to transform a three-point bowman into a dead eye. When what he could have done with the neophytes is used um, used a neophyte on the archer in the front row to transform that into a dead eye, and then use the other neophyte with the order onto the other neophyte. So he actually missed that on a point there. Yeah, unless um, he's playing around coup there yeah. as well with the spying disappearing. Um, that could be a card that Donnery has access to. Not in this hand, though, and Bribery has come down into a Simless. Are we going to see the double Diplo or just one card uh, here, seems like? Yeah, it's something one we've seen each. a lot of the time in these matchups is Simless into double Dip being a key key play. Unfortunately, Donnery wasn't able to set that up here. Does find the Hawk, which is... I mean, it's not great. It's 15 points ahead at the moment. But it's starting to get committal for Magpie as well. You could drop the Ethan Grimm. Not really the type of swarm payoff you would like to see. But it would still keep Magpie in it. Magpie wanted to really win this round. He can. He has the reach. But it will be committal. Uh, we did see Trusky, though, play a couple of leader charges, yeah. sacrificing those in round one, which, again, makes sense, because if you do lose the round, you go into a long round against Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard can clog your board, has the Joachim left, Donner hasn't played Joachim yet, uh, you might not be able to fit those Deadeye charges anyway. 
So um, if you do sacrifice some of them round one, maybe that's fine. And that's what Magpie seems to be doing. Magpie committing two leader charges, holding on to one to get that Isengrim down, potentially losing out on a point if he ends up using this other leader charge later on. Buzzle comes through from Danarai. And there is just a threat now of Magpie winning this round on even. Danarai still has Joachim available, but it's going to be hitting Terra Nova because of the Calvate. Decides to keep hold of it. And yet again, Elves win round one on even. Yet again, bit committal. Also, we did see some of those leader charges. Magpie kind of um, has push potential now if he manages to draw the Feign Death. I believe Maxi was maybe shuffled. Um, but an ARNC is a very important pulse here. So regardless, uh, Magpie is happy to see that one. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised by this mulligan here of the Waylay because we haven't seen Vanadane yet. Uh, and it is a card you're going to want to play into round two for a carryover play for round three. You're going to want to just play some bad cards here. You're going to want to play Alyssa for carryover. You're going to want to play Vanadine. The problem with the mulligan here on the waylay is that now you're not bottom decking a waylay. You're bottom decking a Yaven. Unless I'm sorely mistaken and Vanadine was played in round one, but I don't believe it was. No, absolutely not. That's a really good point. I guess this way Magpie has the option to drop a scenario and maybe leave the Vanadane situation for round three. Because mm. Muzzle now is out as well. That's a big commitment for him. Yeah, that's Donner, true. So we'll see. It's a really and good there point. there is the pain death. Yo, Akir means a coup again. Danarai's <laughs> favorite combo, apparently. It's really good at drawing it. I mean, this is what Calvate does, right? It's guaranteed. And you can see why Furcart is, is gone for, really, as well. Like, this combo is possible because of Furcart. Also, the human tag on Joachim is going to switch off this commando. But now Venosio's on the board. Something we've been <laughs> wanting to see. That engine is switched back on. Venosio's commando only buffs when there's only else on your side of the board, unless you control Venosio. Exactly, and this Yaven value as well is definitely not bad on the Range Rover. Nossiel spawning even more commandos. Um, Yaven, of course, counting himself as well, uh, doing seven points of damage. And then, of course, a Waylay that Elisa then can put back into deck. Unless, of course, the row will be clogged here, which it indeed does with the Brothens. Coming in pretty hot. That's really nice blockage of the, the Yaven here. Yeah, really beautiful. And we can see a downside of Vanadane here. If Magpie's hand was a little bit better, a little bit bigger rather, there was more likely to be some bronze cards you put to the bottom with Vanadane. Realistically, this, this Feign Death play is not great because you're just trading golds for golds. However, if you had a card like Vanadane, which is playing for carryover, you could maybe play Vanadane, get away with playing a Waylay, play Alyssa, just get a load of carryover, and then still have your Feign Death for round three. Instead... Magpie ends up committing two of his gold cards and doesn't even get card advantage. I'm not going to lie to you, this was a disastrous round yeah. for Magpie. Absolutely. Like, that, not being able to play out the Yave and not being able to trigger that last waylay that you want for Elisa um, to potentially still shuffle back. E definitely things didn't go the way Magpie expected there. And really nice Brothens play there from Donnerai. Of course, he couldn't set up the truffle for the carryover that he was maybe looking for, but that's fine because there's an illusionist now in Donnerai's hand, so being able to play that out in round one is also quite nice, even though Brothens is quite the commitment. Also, leader still left from Donnerai. And Vanadane in round three is just not what you hope to see because it is going to mean that if you want to put waylays in your hand, you're going to have to get rid of some of your golds. It's a little bit of a sticky situation for Magpie. It looked like he was in a really winning position after winning round one, but this round two did not go to plan. I think he should have just taken this Vanadane in round two, risking bottom decking one of his gold cards like mm. a Venosio or Feign Death and then just hoping to draw really well. As it stands, yeah. he is in a really sticky situation. In his defense... He was, it wasn't going to go perfectly either. He was going to have to like bottom deck Venosio or Feign Death. And then you'd have to a Neuromancy for Simla. So you he wouldn't have found all his golds either. But yeah. here he just doesn't have a great Simlas because he's going to have two Waylays in hand as opposed to being able to mulligan them back into the deck. And he doesn't have Feign Death. He doesn't have Verno. 
Exactly. But, really big power plays for sure. But he does have Vanadane, as you mentioned. This is our land. There was a... Uh, muzzle is gone. Muzzle is gone. Muzzle is gone. And you can... And... Go on. Terubial was transformed there just because she's not that amazing in this round three is basically what Magpie is saying. So one card does get transformed. It is Terubial that normally is just... It's such a good card. I love that we're seeing it included now. But unfortunately, in this short round three where Donnery can very much play around it, it does get transformed. Yeah, and it turns out you can just transform one card with Vanadin. I suppose what you can do is you click one card in your hand, you click the Truvial, and then you click the Confirm Choice card, uh, the Confirm Choice button. Yaven off leader cleaning up the Vanadin, so there's not going to be all those extra points. That's so important to get rid of that because Simless was about to play quite a lot. Alyssa's going to be able to put back two waylays, I do believe, as well. So Simless yep. is... Oh, was it just one? I don't think the Fain Death even triggered the final chapter in round two, right? True. Yeah, that one was stopped by Donnery's placement of the Brothens. You're right. So one uh, waylay being shuffled back there with Elisa, indeed. Not ideal. And here also bonded value coming in hot for Donnery. Um, well, four point unit, maybe not the best, but it's also not the worst because 24 points right now is looking pretty good for Donnery. With a coup left, the coup could hit something like the Simless, depending on when the Simless comes down. Yaven, it's looking like a card that Magpie might want to save for last just to kind of maximize the value on it. But then the coup on the same list looking a bit iffy. So he does go ahead and play it now to avoid, to be able to play that same list last say. Yeah, and here comes the truffle click. Coup looking rather sad, but you can always coup your own emissary. You can coup a dead eye, uh, not a dead eye. What are they called? The, uh, an elven dead eye. Yeah. Yeah, dead eye. But yeah, this this round two from Magpie is just proven to be an absolute nightmare. Definitely some decisions in the mulligan phase, making him play a little bit awkwardly. Uh, also, just the length of the round, the fact that he wasn't able to force that early pass from Danarai because he didn't have access to Feindeth didn't help. Magpie, he has the Simless. Is it enough? I don't think it is, Seelie. It, it is quite a few points, but I don't believe that there's enough waylays set up for this to be quite enough. It is and a lot of points. Only three, but it is a lot of points. Each waylay is worth six points. The death blow does not matter, <laughs> but it's just not quite enough. One more waylay. Would have been all the difference. I think Magpie's had a nightmare in this game. He's going to be really upset with yeah. how this round two went. He was in a winning yeah. position. He definitely... It seemed to look so good. But Donnery's perfect placement of that extra spy. Uh, thinking that... Yeah. Really considering the Yaven was a such... It paid off that play. Uh, potentially won Donnery the game there. Very skillfully planned. 